This is the Berkeley River, halfway along one of the most remote four-wheel drive tracks in the Kimberley region of Western Australia. And it has been our camp for the night. In part one of this journey, we set off from Home Valley Station with Ronnie and his dad Colin in a bid to complete the Umbulgari track through to Columbaroo. This is an adventure I started five years ago, but never actually made it due to a game-changing storm. But now we're back and we're going all the way. So far, Sean, Colin, Ronnie, Rodney and myself have battled our way north through the remains of the Umbi Township over huge salt pans, up rocky jump ups and sandy riverbeds and onwards to the Berkeley River, arriving late at night exhausted from four huge days behind the wheel. And here we are, preparing ourselves for another big day. What's, we're going to do a lot more rivers by the look of it coming up through here now. Yeah, we've got a lot more river crossings coming up. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spring areas as yeah. well, there's a couple of nice little buggy spots coming up. Now, Ronnie's told me that the second half of this track, or the northern half, really will blow my mind. A lot more rivers, a lot more creeks across, some boggy areas. We might even get to wet a line somewhere up there if we're really lucky. But all I really care about is the fact that we've still got several more days up here in the Kimberley. The rest is unimportant. You blokes ready? Oh, yep. Sure, no? Don't even have to ask you. <laughs> yes. I reckon we get up, get packed up, and go that way. Yes, yes. <laughs> The Berkeley is a little over halfway along the rugged 420 kilometre Umbulgari track, which means we still have almost 200 kilometres to reach our goal in the northernmost part of the Kimberley. We've still got a heck of a journey ahead of us. It's time to get moving. Well, it's time to say goodbye to this Berkeley River campsite, to wake up here this morning, look out over all these pools, Absolutely sensational. In fact, I actually snuck off down there this morning and had a bit of a swim. This is the bit that I've been waiting for. As much as I was looking forward to leaving Gungulgari and continuing up through here, it's up past the Berkeley that I read so much about as a kid. That's that real uncharted territory up through there and I, I just am so keen to see it with my own eyes. Oh, it's rocky. Oh, look at that view over the Berkeley. That is sensational. Let's do this, part two. The Umbulgari track is a tough and rugged touring track. For the most part, the driving is fairly straightforward, but it's got many exciting challenges that have been keeping us on our toes and testing our skills. So far, due to a tame wet season, the journey has been across some very dry lands. But now we're further north. We're starting to see more and more water about the place. I'm thinking this could get interesting. Hey guys, just around this hill here, you should have some uh, spring water seeping out through the hill. Uh, we should have some fun in this little obstacle here. Bring it on! Ronnie tells us that this water up here is from natural springs and it can saturate huge areas of black soil pretty much all year round. All I can think about is our trip five years ago. It was the exact same saturated black soil that got us in all kinds of trouble back then. But Ronnie's got this. He's kept that momentum up through the worst of it. Oh, go Ronnie! Where the heck did that come from? Yeah, mate, that's that spring I was talking about. And just be careful at the end there. The um, exit is a bit slippery. <laughs> that looks like fun, mate. Mate, that was. Here we go. Now, it's my turn in shorty. I'm thinking about that second or third car rule that bogged old Kinky down last time. And that was the beginning of the end for us. After Kinky went down, we each got bogged just trying to recover each other. We don't want that to happen again this time. Come on, shorty. Oh, get out of the colour of it. Chocolate brown. I made it, but we're certainly not out of the woods yet. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's on the nose, that is. Whoa. All right, I'm going to try this. Rocket's seen our approach, and he's not holding back. That big automatic in the 79 has got him covered. There's a bit of fun for you, Shorty. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> oh, there we go. Sean's followed suit too. He's got the Dirty 30 up to speed, and through he comes. 
That's messy. And yep, it does have a bit of an odour about it. Yeah, this one here is a little bit longer. I have to stand the wheel ruts for this one. Ready? Go for it, mate. I'll wait on this side in case I've got to pull you out backwards. <laughs> Check this out. This wet black soil is far from over yet. This stretch is almost three times as long. He's bouncing around everywhere. This gets really slippery in there, doesn't it? There's some big wheel ruts in there too. Oh man, that was awesome. Good fun. Righto boys, we're going in. Black soil is notorious for getting bogged after the rains. And out here you often hear stories of vehicles being stuck for weeks or even months before the ground is dry enough to affect a recovery. Whoa. Yeah! Through we go. Fortunately for us, we've got this. And there are enough dry patches around to recover from, even if a vehicle does go down. <laughs> Rocket bounces his way through. I hope you're not carrying the eggs, mate. Oh, the eggs are safe in this car. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> Righto, lads. Although this mud could stop us and throw the schedule into jeopardy, I've got to say, it's still damn good fun. It certainly gets the heart rate up and the adrenaline pumping. Good stuff. <laughs> I can't see a thing out this windscreen now. Yay, caramba, that is wet and muddy through there, mate. Oh, yeah, mate. Um, that water's there all year round, too, from that spring. It's all coming off this hill here. Yeah, Seep right. Away. Sure, right. Good drive, mate. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> what was it like Very after good. all the trucks have been through? Was it? Well, mate, I've, there's no mud left in that hole anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I picked it all up and took Just it with me. Yeah. yeah. Right, should we keep going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no worries. A few low range sections later, and Rocket spots something coming out from underneath Shorty. Now, considering how remote we are right now, this wasn't good news. It's dripping out everywhere. It's diesel. Well, there is a lot of diesel under there. This is not what you want to see. I've just noticed I've got a very serious fuel leak under old Shorty here. In fact, I'm hemorrhaging diesel. Uh, we're going to have to do a bush repair here on the middle of the track and get going again. I don't know how much diesel I've lost because I've only just noticed it. And if that's what I've got down there from just noticing it now, I could have lost quite a bit, which let us throw fuel range into some sort of jeopardy here. Rockets address these sort of things before. So we'll get this cover off, we'll have a look at it and just assess just how bad this crack is. And hopefully it's only a pinch and we can weld her up with a bit of chemi welder, even use some soap, it's an old bush remedy. So we'll see how we go. But first things first, we've got to get this bash plate off here. That's pretty big. It is, dude. That's what you call a fuel leak. I'll just try, shall I just try rubbing soap over that now so we can save it? Yeah, you're going to have to do something yep. sooner rather than later. On this side even more. The split isn't actually underneath it, it's up and around the edge, yeah. That is phenomenal. Oh. All right, well there you go, that's just a piece of ordinary household soap. And you saw the leak before it was bucketing out of there. I just rubbed it three or four times with a bit of soap and that is, you could almost see it cauterizing that and just stopping that leak 100%. What I'm gonna do now is sort of sounds a bit counterproductive, but we're, we're gonna keep the guard off this fuel tank because it took us about an hour to get this guard off with all the bolts, had to take the rear bar off, etc., etc. So I'm just gonna take it really slow with that guard off so that I can get to this and do the whole process over again if that starts to leak. But look, I don't think it will. I think that's done a pretty darn good job. Just a bit of household soap, nothing more. The crack in the fuel tank would have weakened it significantly. The reality here is that another impact or even a vibration and flexing could tear it wide open and leave me without a tank altogether. Not something I want right here on one of the most remote four-wheel drive tracks in Australia. From now on, that tank is going to always be on my mind as any obstacle could be a potential threat to me finishing this trip under my own steam. Yeah, it looks really uh, cut off. Um, I think we should jump out and have a look at this one, eh? Copy that, mate. This obstacle is typical of any four-wheel drive track, and in normal circumstances, we wouldn't even blink at this. <laughs> Why don't you drive off at first, mate, and knock that edge off, yep. and then um, I'll just go over gently and make sure I don't scrape the old fuel tank on it. Yeah, mate. What Sound up? like a plan? Sounds good. Yeah? Yep. Cool, cool. We'll watch you. Right, oh, we've got a plan. Plan of attack. 
We'll send the boys down first to take the lip off that uh, that edge. It really is quite a substantial yeah, drop. Man, it's a pretty big drop in there, Ronnie. Take your time. With big old evil going over first, it should smooth out that drop before I even attempt yeah, it. Yeah, climb there, Dad. <laughs> oh. yes. How's that looking back there, fellas? Yeah, all good. We'll drive over it. Sean, I reckons it'll be all right, so we're just going to drive straight over. Yeah, just jumped out to watch some more of the action there, fellas. I'm coming off this step at an angle so that I don't drop two wheels off at the same time and potentially smash the tank into the ground. Real slow off there, Greg, real slow. Beautiful. Good stuff. Uh, very good, your tank didn't even touch, mate. Good. Nice one. There we go, we're back on the road. Wow, the track. Now for the other guys. Rocket's no stranger to this type of obstacle, and he takes it in his stride, as will Sean, hopefully. We're still several hundred kilometres from finding Clumberoo, which, in essence, is of no use to me whatsoever. Clumberoo's not going to be of any help, so if we do do any irreversible damage to the fuel tank, we pretty much are towing, flat towing Shorty from here, all the way up to Clumberoo, and then from Clumberoo all the way back to Kununurra, which would be a distance of, what, nearly 1,000 k? Yeah, good. Close to a thousand k of towing. So as you can see, I'm quite anxious to make sure that we do make it to Kununurra under Shorty's own steam because it'll be a heck of a tow job. It'll suck. Yep. So that's why I was a bit anxious about dropping off that, but that um, ah, worked out pretty well. All eyes on, and uh, yeah, we got no. down no problem. Good stuff. Hey, go the dirty thirty. Just then, I spotted a pair of brogers. Have a look at that. They are just. An absolutely stunning bird now. To be able to come out here and get up close and personal to a pair of majestic, beautiful birds like that, well, this is why we come out here, isn't it? Look at that. Look at them in flight. That is truly, truly spectacular. You can see why man saw birds like that in flight and thought, well, if they can do it, sure we can. I don't think we'll ever look as good as that no matter what aeroplane we're in. They're taking off, and I reckon we should too. Despite having had an incredibly dry, wet season, there's still an abundance of life out here because the local inhabitants know exactly where to find water. Soon we decided it was time to pull up and make camp off the side of the track. The sun was about to set and this was the only patch of low-lying grass we'd seen in a while. It was perfect. Sean and Ronnie set up about preparing a campfire, while Rod and I put up our Adventure King's rooftop tents. But we just couldn't help but admire our amazing backdrop, an escarpment that was changing colour in the setting sun. Ronnie was just explaining that this grass that's all around us here is called kerosene grass. It apparently ignites really quickly. So I built a bit of a fire ring, gotta keep the fire kinda small. I'll spark her up mate, let's see what happens. See how we go. Yeah, it doesn't take much. <laughs> Whoa. Doesn't take much at all. I can really see why it's called kerosene grass. So the key is, mate, to keep the fire in here and not no, not out there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's another balmy night here in the Kimberley, and I'm looking forward to enjoying the breeze up here on the roof of Shorty. Little tip here that actually Rocket showed me. I'm actually setting my tent up right now, but when you're putting your tent away, a really good idea is just to open the zip at the front and tuck all this loose material inside the tent. And that way, when you fold it over, all this extra flap is inside the tent and makes putting it away an absolute cinch. If you leave it all hanging out like that, when you put it away, you've got to try and stuff all that back in your, in your bag before you go with the zip. But chucking everything in there just makes life a lot easier. Thanks for that rocket, much appreciated. You know, I'll be honest, today my heart sank when I saw that leak in the fuel tank and I thought, yet again, it could be over for me and Shorty in completing this track. Still, we persevered and got some kilometres under the belt, but I can't help but sense that Ronnie and his dad are concerned for what might come up for the rest of this track.
Don't go away because coming up, we've met that old friend once again, Black Soil. Waking up here in the Kimberley is just magic. You feel so far detached from the rest of the outside world and living in your own remote paradise. That is, of course, if you don't have a gaping hole in your fuel tank to worry about. But I tell you what, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's all part of the adventure, right? Well, I've got good news and bad news. My repair on the fuel tank is working a treat. Doesn't seem to be leaking. That's the good side of things. <laughs> the bad side is I've just discovered I've got a second hole. I'm really mindful of it though. We've got a very long way to go over some pretty rough roads, not to mention some horribly corrugated stuff to come. So I'm gonna give it the same treatment. If I get it now, before it gets any worse, we should be good to go. Now, I've spoken to Ronnie this morning and we need to cover some ground to get back on schedule. He's leading a tour group through here in a few days' time, so we need to reach our goal in a hurry. While the going is easy, we're picking up the pace, but we're keeping focused because around any corner, there could be an obstacle. Hey, guys, just watch your um, top hole on this one. And you can see when you come up to this creek here, you see a lot of top hole, not the, um, not the dirty on this one. Hey Rocket, just keep an eye on my fuel tank for us mate. The Kimberley region is littered with thousands of little creeks that feed the bigger river systems. In the wet this would be in full flow and it's then that these banks become eroded and change from year to year. Hey mate, remember I was telling you about the uh, freshwater crocodiles and you know how you find them up in, uh, in some places you wouldn't think they'd be? Yeah mate. Well, mate, this is one of them. In there, I saw a, a little freshwater crocodile before. You've got to be kidding me. We're up on a tableland up here. How the heck do they get up here? I I don't know, mate, but I, I think they know all about rock climbing. Well, mate, according to the VMS, we're about 100 metres above sea level, so that bloke is coming a fair way to get here, I reckon. As we push further and further north, we're getting back into some really wet country. It wasn't long before we came upon another stretch of black soil. Ronnie leads the way with Old Evil. But this time, he's not so fortunate. Oh, that was a mega big splash. What happened there? Oh dear. Evil has come unstuck. Black soil, eh? Evil just sank. Right on the belly. All right, mate, you want me to winch you out? Yeah, mate, I reckon I could do with a winch. Right, mate, I'll come and just uh, pop myself down here. Got a pretty clean line. I'll pull you straight backwards. Hey, Graham, mate. You've got a feeling of deja vu here. Yes, mate, definitely deja vu. This is what I was afraid of yesterday, and now it's caught us out. It happened last trip, and I had a feeling it would happen again. Learning from last time, I'm keeping Shorty far enough back so that I remain on solid ground throughout this recovery. This stuff is slop. It also stinks a lot. <laughs> Evil's right down to the belly, so this is going to be an almighty winch job. But the Dominator's a workhorse. Let's see how we go. You're all hooked up. Yeah, you will slowly. I'll start winching when you're ready. This wet black soil is caused by another freshwater spring and it's very widespread. Actually, you're stucker than you think. Yeah, mate, I had a look underneath and I'm sitting on the diff here. You're going to turn me into a long wheelbase. We'll get Ronnie back on solid ground to give it another go. If that doesn't work, we'll have to rethink and find a way around. Now that's perfect, that's perfect. All right, you're out. Thank you very much, then, Graham. Mate, that is some savage wheel rotation over there. Oh, yeah, mate. What's your plan? Um, I might try and look for another way over. Yeah, yeah. Probably yep. um, 
through this bit of this grass area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's all soft right through, mate. It's, um, yeah, I reckon you might sink either way. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I don't have a whole heap of advice. Mm, yeah. Go nuts, I reckon. This time, Ronnie's feeding it to Evil and he's given it all he's got. He's taken a slightly different line and managed to stay out of those deep wheel ruts. Yes! Go, 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 go! Yes! <laughs> yeah, good drive, mate, good drive. Ah, oh, finally got through that thing. There we go. I'm actually going to use a little bit of the everything here. I can steer with the front, I might go front just yet. Window up, because it could get muddy through here. Here we go. Front locker. Yeah! Yeah! Shorty! Shorty, you weapon! Bro, that was a Excellent drive, man. That's excellent. I will never doubt this piece anymore. <laughs> mate, she's like, she's like a little tractor. Oh, mate, that was excellent. She's good fun, too. <laughs> good fun. All right, I'm going to try this. Uh, low ratio third, I think. Now for Rocket Rod. Oh, Struth. He slid out wide, but being quick on the wheel, he's brought the 79 back on track. Good work, mate. Good drive. <laughs> Well, that wasn't exactly how I planned it, but it goes to show you, if you take too big a run up, you just slide straight through. Yeah, it's gnarly, mate. All right, I'll bring the 30 through. Now, Sean's seen that it can be done, and he's into it. But the fully loaded rear of his truck has just sunk. Not like that, I won't. <laughs> To be fair, there's already been three vehicles through and that black soil has become extremely boggy. She's boggy. Yeah, mate, my name's Graham Cale. This is the Nissan Recovery Service. Uh, mate, would you like uh, your Toyota taken out of the mud? Fair bit of interference on the radio, mate. Probably got a copy. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, mate, you want me to send the old big truck back and how about we make it so a Toyota pulls out a Toyota? Rod's going to snatch Sean forward. I've got this. Now, this should in theory work no problem, but I actually wonder if Rod's got enough purchase from that distance. Here he goes, but he's not got the traction he needs from there. Pretty soon, and Rod's 79's gone down too. This is history repeating itself. Hey, Rod. You might need a wind to pull you out, mate. <laughs> you ain't for a mate as well, Rod. <laughs> mate, you are, um, what's the word for it? Waiting for a mate. Stuck. <laughs> Bogged, stuck, going nowhere, permanently immobile, leave it here, set fight or burn it. No, Jump mate. in shorty with me. No. Lucky for us, shorno has got the Dominator winch on the back of the Dirty 30. Time to call it into action. It. This is a classic scenario where it's showing its value. All right, I'll get out of the way. So he pulled him out backwards. What I'd really like to see him do now is actually give it a real mango. I want to get third gear low range. Yes. And um, really get bogged. So bogged, it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Colin's gone to Rod's rescue with a perfectly executed snatch perfect. recovery. You got this? I got this, mate. I was born for moments like this. Oh, no, good luck. Oh, you're going backwards. It's going the wrong way. Yes! <laughs> but his confidence is short-lived. He just couldn't avoid all of those wheel ruts. <laughs> I think you got further last time. All right, see you in Columbaroo, bud. Hey, Rocket, I'm about a foot further than last time, mate. I reckon that's natural work now. 
This time we're keeping Rod out of the black soil so that he can try and affect another snatch. I'm also going to use a tree trunk protector to spread the load and give some extra length to that snatch. There you go for a bud. Beautiful! This time it worked. I'm really not the sort of person that makes fun of people, but in this instance, I'm gonna. Now, the basics of it is that uh, every single Toyota here got bogged. I'm the only one that actually blazed a path through and cleared the mud for everyone else, made it through like an absolute champion. Right, that's what happens when you drive a roller yep. skate. Yep. You, see, well, you don't have the weight that we're carrying. Yep, yep. You know. I'm gonna give you a chance to go for it. Three more excuses, go for it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I got through. You got me stuck when I backed back up. I need to get out yeah, of this. We're holding a sweaty Rod, don't worry, mate. Look, I, I got this, I got this. A quick check of my fuel tank, and we're back on the track covering ground. Travelling with Ronnie and Colin is amazing. This is just one of a number of occasions where they've stopped the convoy to check out the different and interesting finds along the track. We've looked at old machinery, vehicles, and a whole variety of plant life that have different uses out in the bush. But this one was particularly useful to us grease monkeys. Right on, mate. All we need here is just to add a bit of water. Yep and you will see the soapy uh, residue come out of it. And yep. Hopefully, if you see my hands there, yep. nice and dirty, yep. after that, they'll be almost as white as your face, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, I just lost my suntan, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I wasn't lying. It's as white as I am. <laughs> Colin, you were telling me before, this is actually called a bird tree. Yes, this here is full of honey, the, 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 the head. When a, a little honey bird comes in, he lands like this, and he puts his beak underneath there and sucks. When he's sucking there, it pollinate here, so when that honeybird goes to the next tree, yeah. it pollinate this other tree. So That's two, incredible. Two, yeah, double, double reaction on this one. But look how perfect that is. It looks exactly like a little miniature bird. Yes. Show me more. <laughs> I will. That's brilliant. The Umbugari track traverses a huge variety of terrains, from sand to rock to mud. But what I find amazing is the constantly changing scenery each one as spectacular as the last. It's almost tropical in here, isn't it? I can't believe how green it is. Yeah, mate, this is another little uh, spring area here. Very swampy kind of stuff too. Well, that might explain all this thick greenery. Yeah, it's really nice in here, actually. Oh, oh. A bit of rocking and rolling going on there. <laughs> We've covered a good distance this afternoon and we've reached the George River and near it is a very special place that Colin is keen to show us. It's an Aboriginal cultural site and therefore Colin has gone ahead to gain us permission from the spirits where to meet him further along the bank. Just the walk alone and I know we're in a very special place right here. This is a pool that skews off from the George River, and it's simply stunning. It was actually nice to be on foot for a change and stretch the legs for a bit, but soon enough we'd got to where Colin was waiting for us. Colin, hey. it's truth, mate. I'll tell you, I had to track your footprints to find you down here. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you again. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, I want to welcome you to the Park Python Pool. And I want to show you something special down here. All right. Some uh, rock art. Lead on, mate. Lead okay. on. We'll follow. The George River stretches some 112 kilometres, and along its course flows over the jewel drop waterfall of the famous King George Falls. I can really see why this place has been so special to the Aboriginal people throughout the years. Right, I brought you guys here to show you the um, rock art here. This place called Umari, and uh, the other name for it is Python Pool, as you see there, that yep. beautiful little pool yep. here. European people know, know these painting is uh, called Bradshaw, the Bradshaw art. Yep. But uh, um, we as Aboriginal people up here, this painting is called Guian. Now, 
We've got a lot of people coming up here, especially the geologists. People want to find out how old these paintings are. Mm -hmm. We as Aboriginal people living in Australia, we, we here been, we've been here for a long time, that's mm -hmm. all I can say. Mm -hmm. We're very old. Mm -hmm. But when um, people come along and say, put a date on it, you know, we don't know. We've got to ask the geologists and that, the people that come and study yep. uh, to, yep. to find out what the date. At the moment, they're all arguing about, you know, some find this painting is a lot older. Yep. And they're arguing about, no, no, it's wrong, you know. So I can only say, you know, come to be about 40,000. Okay. But that's a long time. That's, that's old. old. That's, <laughs> that's still old. Yeah. yeah. That's great. It amazes me that that's obviously west facing. It's been there for 40,000 years and it hasn't faded much. No. That's pretty incredible. You put, a, you put a piece of paper up there that's been printed with a laser printer. It wouldn't last a week facing west. Yeah, incredible. Exactly. Yeah. It's just such a privilege to be here to see these paintings. I've known about these for many, many, many years. In fact, when I was back in high school, I knew about these paintings, but this is actually my first time today that I've laid eyes on them. I've not seen them before, so I've been looking forward to this the whole trip. And when Colin said, oh, it was quite some time ago now, a couple of weeks ago, he said he could take us up here and show us these. I've been looking forward to it ever since, and they haven't let me down one bit. So yeah, for me, heck of a privilege. Don't know if I'll ever get back to see them again, so I'm really gonna soak it in right now, but not for too long. And that sun's just gone down. We gotta find somewhere to camp, so I think we'll just take another minute Check these out and then head off. Colin knew of a place we could set up camp fairly close to the George. So we got set up, got the campfire happening, and then we're just about ready for a feed. <laughs> I've got, uh, I got, I got two big things of tiny taters. Yeah, that'll uh, work. We've got peas and corn, right? Yeah, I've got mobs of peas and corn. I've got um, some asparagus. The tin of the asparagus could take some opening because I used it to hold my door open while I was fixing my speakers. <laughs> so you might need to, yeah. Well, mate, it'll work, it'll be nice and simple. Yep. I'm actually looking forward to this All right, one. Right, whack them in the fire. All right, mate, I'll go get them. All right, done. Well, tonight on the menu we've got steaks, but it's not any old steaks. It's locally sourced, fresh Kimberley Scotch fillet steaks. Now what you're thinking, yeah, it's a pretty simple recipe, but bear with me. What I'm about to show you will rock your world. Remember when you used to go to barbecues back in the day and you had a crazy uncle, he would be having a few beers and he'd be constantly flipping things and yet somehow he made the best barbecue you've ever had? That's because but he everyone, was constantly... Everyone would, would chime in yeah, and say, Yeah, what are you mate, doing? Mate, leave mate, them, mate, leave mate. them, leave them! You just got to leave those steaks. No, 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 no. You've got to do it quick and constantly turn them. Every 15 seconds is my rule. I mean, until you told me this, I had no idea there was such a science yep. behind cooking a yep. steak and, and now, mate, I'm a true believer. You are. Because I've tasted the results. <laughs> Give us a, a nice douse in, All right. in olive oil. What Sean is doing here is oiling the steak, not yeah, the barbecue plate. Because as soon as you oil the barbecue plate, the oil burns. That's a terrible idea. It's, you almost, it's it. almost red hot. I yeah. reckon I put it straight on. Yeah, yeah you're right. probably right. Look at that. Oh, now, yeah. the other trick too for the purists out there, you could use a set of tongs to turn those over. When you use tongs, you grab one end, you bring, bring it up, you turn it over. It does break the filaments and the fibres inside there <laughs> and it makes it less. <laughs> I'm laughing because there's a lot in a steak. You just keep on it. You just keep flipping it every 10, 15 seconds. It's crazy, I know. I reckon the other thing a lot of people struggle on when they're cooking a steak is, is knowing when it's ready. For me, I like a medium rare steak. I like it yep. you know, to be mooing inside sort of thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There's, actually a, there's actually a method that I find reasonably well. If you get your hand and you hold your, your, your thumb and your index finger together, just lightly, not push them together, and then feel that, that's a rare steak. So when you push that steak, it should be approximately that. Yeah. That one there, that's medium rare. Yeah. That's well done. And that in my opinion is overcooked. <laughs> mate, that bad boy is without a doubt, that is, yeah, that's ready yeah. to go. You got He's a plate perfect, there? perfect, mate. Shame to let it. There you go, mate. Look at that. Oh. We've rested that for a little bit. We have rested that, yep. What I'm gonna do now, a bit of salt and pepper. Absolutely, now's the time. On both sides. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. Salt and pepper together, mate. Yeah, Love you're it. a bit of a fancy Love one it. like that. Yeah, yeah. All right. And what we'll do with this one, we'll use this one purely for a taste test. Oh, my mouth's watering. Look at that. Oh, yeah, I could use, Look how easy mate, you, you could have given me a spoon and I could cut this. Yeah. Butter knife. Mate, that'll do, that'll do. You're going to cut through your own leg. Look at that. Look, it just, it literally just yeah, falls, falls apart. apart. Look, donkey, so I'm going to take that off I'll just, I'll just see what this <laughs> tastes like. Yeah, go on, yeah, that bit. Have a go at that, mate. Yeah, you got the biggest yeah, bit. Yeah, Have yeah, a go at yeah. that, mate. Go for it. Thank you. That is sensational, mate. Oh, that is a... Mm. Oh that, yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. It's cooked, it's cooked absolutely perfect. Look, with that in mind, I want to chuck on all those days oh, now, get the veggies that's going. Good. Let's eat. There you go guys, that might be the single best steak I've ever tried. 
What I want you to do, I really want you to try this one at home. Let us know on the Forward of Action Facebook page how you went, and trust me, it'll change the way you cook steak. Mmm. Oh, that's, that's tender. Make sure you stick around because coming up we've worked hard and we've played hard in a bid to complete this adventure. Today we packed up our George River camp at sunrise and our plan is to claw back some time between here and Columbaroo. Well guys, this is the uh, King George crossing right here. Not a lot of water in it this time of year, eh mate? Nah, not at all, mate. It's pretty, um, yeah, pretty shallow at the moment. Or so he thought. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, right up on the bottom, that one. Bloody hell. <laughs> oh, she gets a bit deep in there. <laughs> mate, my bull and everything disappeared there. It's great, bros. As these rivers flow during the wet season, erosion can occur, causing the riverbed to change over time. Yeah, boy! This one, however, is just a bit of fun, and it looks like some of us are having a bit too much fun. <laughs> ah, well, it's good to give the Forbies a bit of a wash. Whoa, that's up. <laughs> We're all through, but it wasn't long after that Rodney spotted more than just water dripping from Shorty. My bush repair was starting to fail. Well, the old soap trick did actually work for quite some way, but we're just going along. Luckily, we're actually going along a stony section through here, and um, Rod noticed a bit of a drip coming out from behind, and I reckon we've just taken it about as far as soap can go. The plan now is to drain the fuel out. I don't think I've got much in there. We've got a 20 here. I don't think it'll even fill this up. Oh, oh, could. Uh, and then we're going to degrease this tank, and then we're going to put some, uh, some chemi weld over the top. Hopefully, that'll adhere to it and stop this once and for all. Uh, with diesel the way it is at the moment, and being as close to running out as we are, we're trying to save every single drop that we can. The rough and bond air and clean with alcohol, twist break it cut off the amount, blah blah blah, aggressively knead, it'll start to do a chemical reaction, complete repair within three minutes of that. The trick is to get the surface of the tank as clean as possible, and then rough it up so that the chem weld can get a good hold. Notice I'm using a brass barbecue brush. That's so that I don't cause any sparks and ignite any vapour that might be hanging around. To activate this stuff, you have to knead it all together to get the chemicals in it to react. It. Yeah. Very well. No about it. Yeah, go on, squeeze it all up right. in there. Make a plug. Gotta go on. It looks like it's going on there well. Good work, Rod. That's, that's, really, stick, that's really sticking to it perfectly. Good, man. Well done. So I was redecorating my fingers, I reckon that job's done. Sweet dude. Righto, that should take about, well, it should go hard in about 45 minutes, but um, we might give that a bit longer, two hours or so. Yeah, just, just before we even, sure. Yeah, before we even stress it. Once it's super hard, you can actually file it, drill it, you can do all the sorts of things you'd normally do with metal. It's amazing stuff. So I'm gonna put that drain plug back in. Yeah, And then, uh, perfect. And then we'll, we'll test it, see how we go. Looking at the VMS, it's with some mixed emotions that I notice we are now almost under 100 kilometres from Clumbaroo, of course. Been a fantastic trip, I don't want it to end. But I'm really keen to get up to Clumbaroo and have a look at the beach up there. I've heard it's beautiful. Of course, we've still got a fair ways to go. When I say just under 100 clicks, that out here still means we've got a lot, a lot, a lot of room to go. 100 kilometres when you're only doing 10, 15 k's an hour is still a mammoth drive. You do the sums, plus you stop every now and again to look at things. We'll see how we go though. This track ain't finished with us yet. Soon we come upon another relic of this track. Hey guys, just around the corner here, there's an old uh, 40 shorty here. Returning back to the earth by the look of it. What an absolute beast, mate. Yeah, this one, um, we call it Jason's 
Jason's 40. They drove it out here to go out there to King George there. And um, they didn't, didn't quite make it. Pretty bloody good job to get this far with no back tyres on it. <laughs> We managed to cover a lot of ground since fixing up my fuel tank again, and that afternoon we arrived at the Drysdale River. The Drysdale rises in the Caroline Ranges and flows in a northerly direction into the Napier Broom Bay right near Columbaroo. Right now the main crossing is very shallow, although again there are some holes to watch out for. The fishing around here is pretty good too, which I know Sean is already aware of by the sound of things. All he can think about is wetting a line. Hey Ronnie, you got a copy up the front mate? Yeah mate. Mate, you wouldn't know of any um, fishing spots down this way, would you? I do, but um, we'll be crossing the river at a different area. Yeah right, I like the sound of that mate. Ronnie, you're not giving him one of your secret spots, are you? Yeah mate, wink wink. <laughs> Well, mate, we're at that little crossing here. I'm just gonna have to jump out and have a look at it. We've got a bit of a drop off here. Yeah, mate, I might um, grab the GME and quickly come out and spot if you want. Yeah, spot Ronnie into the deep holes. Take me through the shallow ones, mate. <laughs> Roger, mate. Any crocs in here, mate, or what? Nah, nah, nothing, mate. Nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> you're a very small man in a big river. Feel a bit isolated when you're out by yourself halfway through the dry zone, mate. <laughs> oh, that's a good one right there. Yeah, Ronnie, on that line, mate, that's good. Hey, Graham, from this angle, I cannot see Shauna. There's a lot of angles you shouldn't see Shauna from. <laughs> She's pretty deep, big, deep hole, but after that, it gets pretty good. The great thing about travelling with Ronnie is that he knows all the best spots including access to a great fishing hole and an awesome place to camp tonight right on the banks of the Drysdale. We've just got to get across safely first. Yeah, come down on that line, mate. I can't see anything from here. This is an epic little yeah, the angle you're on. This is unique for me. Shorty is not taking on water. It's not something I'm used to. Shorty normally has water bubbling up everywhere. It's pretty good at the moment. Beautiful river crossing there, Graham. <laughs> that was brilliant. Nice and deep. That is a really good river crossing. That's a long way down this bank. <laughs> Sean's doing a good job of guiding us around all the big holes in the riverbed. Nice one, mate. Good work. Rod's held up a bit on that exit. Oh, that's nasty. That is nasty. That's exactly what I've been wanting to avoid. Righto, fellas, I'm coming across. OK, it's just Sean to bring the big dirty 30 over now. He knows the way by now. Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't take much. That. that ain't take much. He, uh, he, he was only what? Uh, that yeah, that's feet. the head. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's only a little one. Righto, Blaze. Where's his fishing spot? Is it close? Yeah, cool. yeah not too far now, mate. Down, down this way? Yeah. Yep. While Sean disappears to the fishing hole, the rest of us set up camp and enjoy yet another glorious Kimberley evening. Look at that, William. We are nine tenths of the way through this trip right now. I kind of just thought we'd cross the Drysdale, maybe a quick camp, and get into Columbaroo. Now, check out this campsite. I did not expect this. That's not the best campsite you've ever seen. I don't know if I can handle the best. I honestly don't, because this one here, it's too good. Too good. Well, it's not often you get to do a trip as big as this one, and then to share it with some absolutely fantastic mates. And then on top of that, to celebrate a bit of a milestone in a good mate's life. I'd like to bring Rocket up here. Rocket! <laughs> 
Come on down here, mate. What's going on? <laughs> mate, I had a bit of an idea a couple of days ago. I'd like to present this to your happiest, um, 50th birthday. Oh, happy happy thank 21st, you very mate. Much. <laughs> thank How cool you. is that? An honour. Thank That's, you very much, yeah. guys. Happy 50th, brother. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Happy 50th, <laughs> brother. That's brilliant. Well carved, too. Isn't Jeez, it just? Get a load of that. It is insane. Amazing. It's got the date, it's got your birth date on it and everything. Yeah, it's got the lot. Get a load of that. Yeah, that is a real keepsake, mate. Oh, no, that's... I'm I, overwhelmed. I, I really am. Don't know how you're no, going to wear it around your you. neck, but... <laughs> 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 we'll make a necklace out of it or something. <laughs> thank you very much. Good on you, mate. Thank you very much. I don't know if you get that in a hurry. Well, cool. it's not every day you turn 50. I'm a long, long way from there, long way. <laughs> I'm roughly halfway there. <laughs> we had a great night down by the Drysdale, telling a few yarns about past adventures. But we're up again at sunrise to prepare for the final leg of our journey. A few maintenance checks and we'll be heading out. Okay, it's time to head off. But as we're climbing out of the river, we hit some extremely soft sand. Evil's gone down just to the top. Now look, I think all it's going to take is some max tracks to get out of this one. First to dig away a bit of the built up sand and then position the max tracks in front of each tyre. Right That's the way, a little extra help from us and Evil's out. <laughs> The sand was so soft during the recovery, Evil has buried one of the Max tracks, and now we can't find it. They do actually come with ribbons to avoid this issue. But we've got lazy and we didn't use them. However, Rocket Rod has come up with a great idea. He's grabbed the window stays from his rooftop tent and we can use them like avalanche probes. Look at the depth you can get on that. And it's worked. <laughs> Look at that, yeah! we found the last Max track. That was inspired thinking, my friend. That worked a treat. I'm going to market these as Max Trax finding poles. <laughs> now, we're all going to hit this with a lot more momentum to carry us over the top. We did it. Way to go. Good one, boys. That was so much more challenging after you guys went through because you churned it up. It was really soft. Oh, look at it now. So much more challenging. Look at it now. Here we but, go. Um, it's a highway. I'm I hope you guys. A Mack truck through here now you, without getting bogged. You, you blokes did learn from how we did it, though. You watched and saw how we did it. All right. It's good. That was a good lesson. <laughs> Back on the track, and we're pretty much home and hosed. The rest of this track is almost two wheel drive. I've got to tell you, I'm feeling pretty darn good about it right now. Ronnie, however, had one last stop before we headed into town, and it was just what we all needed. This is uh, Nullawari. Nullawari. Would Beautiful be. place. Oh, it's stunning, it's stunning spot. This freshwater swimming hole is just outside Columbaroo, and it was great to finally get a good wash and cool off. I tell you what, if you think this looks good on TV, you should be here. After so many days out bush, this is like paradise reborn. Ronnie said it'd be worthwhile. He wasn't lying a word. This is sensational. This was it. Time to meet our goal. Well, I haven't had much experience lately, but I'm thinking those things are buildings. Yeah, mate, they are. Welcome to Columbaroo. Yes! No, oh, geez, it feels great to be here. Wyndham to Columbaroo via the Umbagari track. There's not many people that can say they've done that, so congratulations to everyone. It's my second attempt. Absolutely stoked to be here. I think you all did a really good effort there coming through this country. And uh, yeah, let me be the first to welcome you. That was some of the toughest, slowest forward driving I've ever done. I'll tell you what, we couldn't have done it without you, Ronnie, and you, Colin. Hats off to you guys. You did a great job of getting us all through in one piece. I can get a haircut here. <laughs> <laughs> After picking up some permits from the office in town, we made our way to McGowan's camp. This was to be the end of the road for us and our final camp of the trip. Get a load of this, boys. 
What an absolute beautiful spot. Look how flat that water is. It's just the right time of day. Arriving just at sunset to where the land meets the ocean right at the top of the Kimberley was unbelievable. This might be one of the best things I've ever seen. I can even see fish. Look at them. I've been waiting five years to come back to the Kimberley to finish what I started, and now I've done it. But I just couldn't have done it without Ronnie and Colin. If you want to do a trip that you'll remember for the rest of your life, get in touch with Ronnie at Just Over the Hills Tag Along Tours and book your own Kimberley adventure. Trust me, you will not regret it. Congratulations, mate. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, 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 man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, there you go. Five years in the making and I'm finally watching a West Coast sunset after having driven the Umbulgari track. I'm going to say it now, once and for all. That is the single best four-wheel drive track I've ever driven anywhere in Australia. It's not a big call. Come up and do it and you'll see for yourself. You might catch me up here because I'm definitely doing that track again. But you know the drill by now. If you don't, I'll see you next time on four-wheel drive action. <laughs> Boys! For more on this adventure and to find out all the details that you didn't see on camera, read my article in the mag. Believe me, you'll want to know this stuff. If you enjoyed this DVD, don't forget that you can watch every episode of 4-Wheel Drive Action and it's available for download in HD from our massive online library. There are over 100 episodes available for your viewing pleasure. Also, if you want to keep up to date with 4-Wheel Drive Action, then like our Facebook page. You'll get heaps of videos, epic pics, competitions and more. Get involved, you won't regret it.